Okay, thank you very much, Coach Dabi, for having me here this evening. It's a privilege, and I do not take it for granted. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, and for the participants, I want to believe you are taking advantage of what you are learning here. It's free, but the fact that it's free doesn't mean it's cheap. The fact that uh, Coach Dami is bringing it, you know, making it free for you guys doesn't mean it's cheap. So I would like you to just take advantage of the information you are having access to now and then make good use of the information. So this evening, uh, I'll just be riding on what Coach Musti and all other amazing um, Forex educators have been teaching since the bootcamp started. And um, I'll be taking the smart money plays. Smart money plays. But before that, I would like to do a recap <clears throat> on some of the things you've done so far. I, 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 I couldn't join some of the sessions, but at least we're going to have a kind of a recap of what has been done so far, so that at least anyone that is joining us for the first time this evening can at least catch what we are saying and then just flow with us. Are we? Are we together on that, please? Are we together on that? If we are together, just give me one on one in the chat. One on one, if we are together. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> we did structure and uh, we're told that um, structure is just the anatomy of price movements. Is the structure, <laughs> let me say, I'm saying structure, is the system and the way that price moves. And we're taught that price moves, it takes the um, upper trend movements, it takes the uh, excuse me please okay so it takes the uptrend movement, it takes the downtrend movement and then we have the ranging or consolidation. Am I right? And uh, I want to believe you were told that uh, you were told that for the uh, for the uptrend, the uptrend is a combination of series of higher highs and higher lows. What do I mean by that? When market moves from one higher structural point to another higher structural point, that's the uptrend. And then for the downtrend, when market moves from one lower structural point to another lower structural point. Are we on the same page, please? Don't mind my drawing. Room. And then I want to believe we also thought that um, the sign that the sign that a market wants to change from the uptrend to a downtrend is that the market breaks structure. What do we mean by that? Okay, market has been forming higher, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and then this formed higher high and then came down instead of forming a higher low. Just breaks below the last higher low. 
So when you see this, you know that okay, this market is trying to sell, but it's not just enough to know that this market is trying to sell. You must know where to enter and where to exit, where to enter and where to exit. And <clears throat> this is where the concepts that we've been teaching so far comes in the smart money concept, where you learn about the liquidity sweep, how that in this higher highs and higher lows, price creates a kind of liquidity here and then takes it out so we take this candle that took out the liquidity as the institutional candle before that break of structure i'm trying to put in so many things together we've done this before it's just a recap this is not my main uh discourse for tonight so market creates liquidity here we call it the dollars okay we can see it's very clear and then the candle that takes out this liquidity here we call that candle institutional candle so after the liquidity sweep we expect that the market breaks structure downwards after the breaking of structure we expect that the mitigation theory i believe you've been taught that the mitigation theory takes place what do i mean by mitigation theory mm -hmm. the process whereby markets or price goes back to close the order that serves the liquidity. Some people call it return to order, some people call it out to you. There are so many terms for it. But when it comes to smart money concepts, we call it the mitigation. So basically, smart money is all about structural identification of price movements. Then from there, you you spot the break of structure. When you spot the break of structure, you go back to look at the last structural points that was formed before the break of structure happened. If you can spot any, any liquidity sweep there, mark the candle that did that bad thing. You mark that candle, that candle is called the Ishna candle. And then once the market breaks structure, we expect that the mitigation theory will take place. And I said that the mitigation theory is the process where the price goes back to fill or to close that order that was used to sweep the liquidity. This has been taught extensively. I'm just doing a recap, especially for those <clears throat> that have just joined us. So I've talked about the structural movement of the market. I've talked about the break of structure. I've talked about the liquidity sweep. I've talked about the East China candle. So, having discussed all this, I would like to talk about POI identification and smart money plays. POI identification and smart money plays. <laughs> So what do I mean by this? <clears throat> so let's assume that the price movement is a downtrend movement. And I believe you've been taught range. Range. If you don't understand the concept of range, I would advise that you go back and, and watch the video that has been dropped on Telegram. You go and watch it. The range of the market, how to identify your range. If you can't identify your range, it will be difficult for you to spot your points of interest. Let me repeat that. If you find it difficult to identify your range, it will be difficult for you to spot your points of interest. So these are our range.
just a structural movement. Now, markets broke this last point, this last structural point. Please, are you guys with me? Are you with me, please? Can you can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is the last structural point. And from what we are seeing, there was a break of that last structural point downward. <coughs> downward. So this is where we'll be looking at now. As a point as the range and what the points of interest. This is a downward price movement, price break structure downward. We expect it to go back to that last block that was formed before this break of structure happened which happens to be this marked zone but then you don't just mark it anyhow because there are things that happens here that, that makes you know that okay <coughs> thank you pardon there are things that happens here that makes you know that okay price is going to turn from this place and that is what i'll be talking about this evening smart money please what do i mean by smart money please smart money please simply means the signature of the movement of the smart money guys for example if if you are the type that that, that makes use of a a a a, a type of perfume I mean, you don't change your oil. You, you are consistent in using that same type of oil. It will get to a point that when you enter any hall, any place, any room, people will know that, okay, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. People will know that, okay, yes, this is this person. Why? Because you've been known with that, you know, atmosphere, that smell, that fragrance. You get it. Same thing applies to smart money, please. So that when they move, you know that okay, these guys are the one doing this thing. And because we know that they are the one doing this thing, we know that okay, this is the next thing that these guys will want to do. Am I am I communicating, please? This is the next thing that these guys will want to do. So the first smart money play i'll be talking about this evening is what i call the imbalance so, The imbalance. What is imbalance? Oh, please, can we create a link for this so that we can send to the other group? Coach Dami, can you create a link for this class so we can send to the other group? I think these guys are requesting for link. Uh, The imbalance. <clears throat> so what what do I mean by imbalance? What, what does imbalance mean? I would like to ask you guys before I go into my definition. When you hear the word imbalance, what, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind when you hear the word imbalance? You can make it of the chat box, please. Make it of the chat box. I mean the group, since this is not a Zoom call. 
just use the Zoom, the chat, the, the platform, and, and let me see what you have in mind. You hear the word imbalance. What comes to your mind? Imbalance. I want to believe it must have been. You know, this price action is imbalance. Oh, it's not even about forex now. When you hear the word imbalance to you, what what does it mean? Yeah, we are not having a wrong answer here. We are all learning. I'm learning from you guys. You guys are also learning from me. So be free to give your own answers, please. Imbalance. I'm waiting for a imbalance. Insufficient. Okay. Imbalance is excess buy or sell order. Thank you, Mr. Abel. Any other imbalance is excess buy or sell order. Excess buy or sell order. I'm waiting for those that are typing. <laughs> I'm waiting for you guys. Excess buy or sell order insufficient meaning when something is not enough if, if, I, if i'm with you insufficient when something is not enough victory is typing let me see what you want to drop you hear the word imbalance 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 what comes to your mind imbalance how many are we on this call Not balanced. <laughs> See this wise uh, answer. Imbalance is bias without sell can do. Is bias without sell can do balancing. Victory, can you unmute yourself and just read? I don't understand. Can you unmute yourself and and, and, and talk if you are, if you can hear me? Okay, you're finding it difficult to, to mute yourself. Okay, your your answers are correct. An imbalance is a bullish candle that is not fueled by bearish candle and vice versa. Thank you, thank you, Damilola. These are amazing, amazing answers. Ebuka is, type, is typing. Let me see what you want to drop. Let me see the bomb you want to drop. Let me see the bomb Ibuka wants to drop. Imbalance. <clears throat> okay, let me not waste our time. Let me not waste our time because we still have a long way to go. Is front print of smart money? Yes, imbalance is the footprint of smart money. Thank you. You are uh, you are absolutely correct. Imbalance is the footprint of, of smart money. Now let me bring together all these things that you guys have, have dropped. Imbalance, you can simply say that imbalance is, is the excessive movement of price towards a given direction either by or sell imbalance is the excessive movement of price towards a given direction and this can either be a buy or sell without the influence this is my own divination without the influence without influence from
from the counter direction. Imbalance is the excessive movement of price towards a given direction, either a buy or a sell, without influence from the counter direction. What does this simply mean? It simply means that excessive movement of price either to buy or to sell. And so if price is buying, is buying in a way that there is no influence from the sell order. And if price is selling excessively, is selling excessively to the extent that no influence from the buy orders will be able to stop it. Do you understand? Do you understand? This is what they call imbalance. But because the, 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 the price movement must give uh, a balanced price action. I want to believe you must have heard that word, uh, incomplete price action, balanced price action, imbalanced price action on LD, all these are just English. Price system, the movement of price should be balanced. What do I mean by that? The, the volume of the buy order must be equal to the volume of the sell order. There must be equilibrium between the volume of the buy orders and the sell orders. When this is not happening, that means a particular order, a particular uh, order is higher than the other. So a particular order, maybe a buy now, is higher. The order that is coming for the buy is higher than the order that is coming for the sell. Or the order that is coming for the sell is higher than the order that is coming for the buy. When this happens, it creates incomplete price action. Incomplete price action. And when this happens, we are sure and certain that price will come back to complete that movement. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, because it will surely happen. It will and it must surely balance. When, we don't know. It will take months, it may take years, it may take days, but price must surely balance. Do we understand? And, and this is usually represented through maybe a long, yossi long, or long consecutive buy candles, log consecutive sales candles. It's just, it just shows that the influence of the counter direction is so, so low that you won't even feel it. You won't see it in the chart. You won't feel it and you won't see it in the chart. So let me, let me go to my charts and, and just show us. <clears throat> I think I saw one around C1, K, C1000. First man to five. One thousand, I saw one. So yeah, coming. Okay, uh, I saw one here. I'm trying to look at where to spot where I saw it. I didn't mark it actually. Okay, let's check. Let's check you. 
You are daily. I'm coming, please. Okay, um, I've seen one. Sorry, I, I, I've been quite busy, so I don't really have the time to scan through my, my chats. Okay, can we all see this, my screen? Can we all see my screen? Can we all see my screen, please? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. So based on based on what we've been taught so far, based on what, what we've been taught so far, what happened here, guys? What happened here? What happened here? A break of structure. Okay, a break of structure. And normally when market break structure, you come back to your last range, which happens to be here. This is the range. Here, here. So this guy broke structure to the upside and came back to retest. Now, Take note of where the retest happened. Take note of what happened here. Is anybody seeing what, what happened here? Yes. Okay. What happened here? What happened here? Can someone explain what happened here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are seeing it. What happened? Let to, tell me what happened. The imbalance. The imbalance. How did you know that this place happens to be imbalance? Imbalance. What makes you know that this place? Please, one after the other. What makes you? What what gives you the assurance that this place happens to be an imbalance point? What are you seeing there that makes you know that is an imbalance? The last week of okay, the candle. There is no the... sell order. There is no sell order. Um, uh, is it like mitigating the buy candle, right? Between these my marked points, between these my marked points, there was no sell order at all. There was no sell order at all. At all. So this guy just came to, this guy just came, some people will play the open of the imbalance, some people will play 50% of the imbalance, some people will play the feeling of the imbalance. But in this case, if you play the, if you play the open of the imbalance, 
you are filled already. You can see that this guy came to fill you up. And even you would have backed, let's say, one to three here with this move. You would have backed one to three here with this move. Because there was actually a sweep here. Changing into line chart, there was a sweep here. Can we see what happened here? There was a sweep here. Market broke structure to the upside, came back to test our hand balance. And we see it diving up. Do we understand? That's that's imbalance. I'm recording. I'm recording. That's imbalance for you. Imbalance. So let's go to the next. imbalance the next the next one i would like to talk about is the smart money cube or sm cube so what does SM cube simply means? SM cube is a bearish is a bearish candle between consecutive or the Between consecutive or a bullish can do between consecutive. Bearish candle is called the smart money cube. So I will call it uh, uh, the FRT fail to return pattern. So when you are spotting, let, let me just let me let, let me try to give a good analogy. When you are spotting a a bearish, sorry, I won't draw weak, but I'm just trying to uh, to show something. Oh dear. Bearish okay. just manage my candle. I'm not a good. I'm not a good uh... so 
based on the definition that we that based on the definition that we gave smart money cube, a bearish candle between two consecutive bullish candle at POI or a bullish candle between consecutive bearish candle. So we can see three consecutive bearish candle, and then there was an attempt for price for buyers to push price back to the origin where it's coming from. But before the sorry by the so you cannot see the you cannot see the your screen has not changed. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Can you see now? Yes, sir. Okay. So bullish candle between consecutive bearish candle. So you can see three consecutive bearish candle, and all of a sudden a bullish candle is appearing. This means there are buyers coming into my into the market, attempting to push this market back to the origin. But because of the pressure of the sellers in the market, they couldn't do it. So the sellers took over and they are still selling. So this spot that you are seeing is called a smart money cube. That's their footprint. That's their footprint. And you can see that if we check your, um, let me see, where do we get that now? Few minutes, let me scan the markets to see where we can get that so that at least. Let me check. I think I saw one play on EU recently. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah, please. Um, on that BT, please. I I have a question. Okay. You can ask your questions yeah, when we are done, please. sir. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 Yes, so what happened? What can we see here based on the explanation I just gave? Hello. Can anybody hear me? Can you hear you, sir? Yeah, what happened here based on the explanation I just gave us? Why do you call this place smart money? Why? You said so, sir. Sir? Why? Why is it called smart money? There were a series of bearish candles followed by one bullish candle and then the bearish candles series continues. And what happened when market kissed that cube? It came back to mitigate it. It continued to sell. It continued to sell. It continued to what? To sell. So they have signatures all around. They have signatures all around. However, you need to understand that you don't just take these things anywhere. Like I said, you need to take them based on what your buyers is saying according about the market. If you are looking to sell and you are seeing smart money pay to buy, then you need to be wary of what you are doing and then check and check and check and check well. Are we together? Smart money cube. I think I saw one here yeah, coming. 
Okay, like this guy now. I'm seeing one here now. On this daily. Sorry, I'm switching from one screen to another. So that is a big challenge for me. Let's just let's just manage for tonight. I'm seeing one here now. Price will likely turn back from here. Or, yeah. Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this, please? Yes, we are. Okay, so let's check any other assets. Scan around assets that you can see. Okay. Okay. I think this is one. Can you see my screen? Here is one. Here is one. However, let me check if it's still within the range where I can. I can pick it. Okay, it's below my 50%. So it's a viable POI for this B5 daily. Why? Look at what happened there. See, it's clear. It's clear. Buy, 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 attempts to sell, buy continues, and then break structure. So there was a sweep here. There was a sweep here. There was a sweep down, break structure. But before breaking structure, there was they left a footprint here. They left a footprint here. So markets can respect either here. Market can respect either this place. or take out this weeks and still come back to respect our institutional candle. And still come back to respect our institutional candle. Whichever case, they are still PUI. Why? Because this zone is still below, it's also below 50%. Anything can happen there. Any damn thing can happen here. Anything can happen here. Anything can happen here. This is this is how this is how I this is how I I I I, I approach the markets. This is how I approach the markets. Structure first. Structure first. Okay. Downtrend. Lower low. Lower high. Lower low. You may say this one is in a lower low, but change it to line charts. You will see that the guy actually closed below. So it's a valid lower low, lower high, lower low. But there was a sweep. And then this guy broke structure. So when it's break structure, I'll be looking at this whole place. Okay, what happened here exactly? What is what what happened here? What happened here exactly before the push up of price to the to break that structure? So I can see here that, okay, there was a smart money play here, which is the Q. This Schnack can be here. And before this Schnack can be, I can see liquidities. So if you are conservative, you can, you can wait for price to get here before you place your trade. But I'm telling you that this guy may turn back from here. We just come here like this and then blast up or come here like this and then blast up. Whichever way, 
in as much as it's your trading edge that is giving you or informing your buyers you are still right even if you lose that trade do we understand so that's 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 all about the smart money the smart money cube wow i love this okay um so the next one will be We've talked about the imbalance, we've talked about the smart money cube. The next one is the banker block. So what is the banker block? What is the banker block? <laughs> if you've heard about the banker block before, let me see, let me signify by typing one 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 of the charts you don't have to be shy if you've heard of the word banker block before let me see your one 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 please okay uh damilola what's banker block since you've heard it before, what's banker block? What's banker block? Famous, you can also tell us to what's banker block, please. Let's learn from you. We are all learning here. I'm facilitating, but I'm also learning. What's banker block? What's banker block? A banker block is a failed order block. No, sir. <laughs> Mr. Famous, nah. Nah, okay. Let me not waste our time. Let me use charts to explain what the banker block is. Okay, so we are having a series of so what happened here? There was a break of structure. What happened here? External liquidity sweep. So we take this place as our institutional zone. Can't see it. Can't see your. Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm switching between. Two screens, sorry. Can you see now? Can you see now? Can you see? Okay, so the the bearish order flow breaks structure, comes back, and then um, price continues to buy. So the break of structure happened here. There was a sweep here. This place happens to be our institutional zone. Sorry. This place happens to be our institutional zone. And of course, the mitigation theory happens. Everything will be saying this is happening here. Structural points. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. 
break of structure. And the break of structure happened by reason of the external sweep. So this break of structure makes us know that there was an external a sweep of external liquidity here. External liquidity sweep there. BOS to the hub side. Market comes back to mitigate this external candle and then we continue to buy. So where does bank up lock? Well, where where from this where out of this place do we want to call a bank up block now? This is our bank up block. Let me find it. Where? So if I want to define this banker block now, so I can I can just say a banker block is the last bearish or bullish candle that closes the drawdown candle institutional, which is what we call institutional. This process is known as the mitigation process. Are we together, guys? So definitely, we expect that this guy should come back. See, even if you have if you have higher time frame biases, go to your lower time frame and see spot all these things that we are looking at. It's because there is no time. And I, like I said, I didn't have the time to check to give us a lot of examples. I've been on transit for weeks now, so I, I've not been charged. But the same thing, the same way you are seeing, you are spotting them on higher time frames. If you go to your lower time frame, if you spot point of interest on higher time frame, if you go to your lower time frame, you will see all this smart money placed there. You will see all this smart money placed there. So the banker block comes to form, market creates another high, then comes back to that banker block. So we expect our entry now to be here, somewhere here. Stop loss below that range, and then you drive markets to the new high. Am I communicating now? Now you need to know that what what validates a banker block is the creation of a new high or a new low. What am I trying to say? What validates that this place is a banker block is that this structural point gets broken. And when the structural point gets broken, it means a new eye has been formed. That's what validates this banker block. If this thing does not happen, this is still your range. This is still your range. Until this happens, before you can take this place as your range. Do we understand? Do we understand? If you understand, give me two to two on the charts. Two to two on the charts. Okay, let me see where I can spot this on our charts. Uh, okay, so let me, if I let's use this. If this guy comes back here now. Based on what we've been talking about, B B five. If this guy comes back here, 
Or comes, comes back. back. Comes. Can't see us. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Based on what we've been saying, if this guy comes back here or comes back here, whichever way, this place becomes a banker block. This place becomes a banker block. What validates it? This place was broken. Do we understand? Do we understand? Okay. Um. Yes, very clear, sir. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, let's, I'm seeing another one, so. Okay, look at this B3. So, I, low, I, broke structure. But if you want to look at it from the daily perspective, let's look at it from the daily perspective. I, low, I, broke structure came back to this cube, right? So what informs, what informed market from rallying down from here is this uh, cube that happened there. But this guy broke structure again downwards, right? It broke structure again downwards. We expect this guy to come somewhere around here. Are we getting this? Are we getting this? Yes, we are. Okay. So let's move on to uh let's move on to another block called the breaker block. There is a difference between the banker block and the breaker block, they are not the same thing. They look similar, but I tell you, they are not the same thing at all. The breaker block. Okay. So, steel structure, everything we'll be doing revolves around our dear structure. So, let's assume the market creates I low, I. So, we expect. Oh. Thank you for this reminder. Okay, let me start again. Ah, that is the same utility. So, okay, so I low high and then we expect this guy to come here and then rally that up.
this should be your expectation for i uh, for uh for the buy trend for the bullish trend however this guy can behave like this Have you seen this before in the markets? Have you seen this before in the markets? Have you seen this before in the markets? Where you'll be expecting, you would have envisaged that this place would be your POI. But then this guy will just pin it down. Just pin it down. So this guy can come back here and then say down. Why? Because this place is a breaker block. It is a failed other block. The other block broke structure upward but couldn't hold price down. So it's failed. So people call it the Judas string. We all know Judas to be a betrayer. We know Judas to be a betrayer. So this block betrayed this buy trend. The block betrayed the buy trend. It betrayed the buy trend. So this guy can come back to this block that couldn't hold price and then sell down from there. Why are we looking at markets in different perspective like this? It will give you a kind of holistic view and perception about the market. So even if market takes you out, you know why market is taking you out. You know why market is taking you out. You see how you see why it's called smart. You've got to be smart. It makes you smart. It makes you smart. Is an other block that couldn't hold price. It couldn't hold price. So it fell. And then we expect that price will come back, may come back to that block and then dive down. So we have different confirmations for PO highs. But what now strengthens your bias is your lower time frame evidence when you get to that PO highs. Your lower time frame evidence is when you get to that PO high. The breaker block. Let me see if I can spot any very quickly. Based on what I've showed you now, you can also you can also check out, watch out for it. Let's check our charts. They are all over. They are all over our charts. If you can check and see, they are all over. Spot your PO highs and see what smart money is being played there. They are everywhere. I mean, everywhere, everywhere. In fact, still that, still that, uh, still that B5. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, break structure. So, 
this block betrayed that cell trend. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So this block betrayed that cell trend, which now correlates with our cube that is here. It failed, it broke structure downward, but failed to hold price, tried to, but couldn't. You can see these several rejections, tried to hold, but couldn't. It's a betrayer to this downtrend. It's a betrayer to this downtrend. Tried to hold the price, but couldn't. So we had a search up and then we expect price to come back down. Any question before I take the last smart money, please? Any question before I take the last, okay? Let me just type. Any question before I take the last? You can type your question. Hello? Yeah, we're with you. Good evening, sir. Uh, Good day, boss. My question is the mass for that block. Do they always come and meet together position again or they don't come to meet together position again? Please come again. I said um, my question in regard to this um, banker's um, candle. Okay. Bankers block. Yes. The bankers block, yes. Do they come back to come and meet to get the candle again? Or how? Which of the candles? Let me draw the banker block for you. Let me draw the banker block for you. Okay, okay. Right? I will call this place the banker block. So what are you saying, sir? What are you saying, sir? This, this is the institutional can do. This is the banker block. So what are you saying? What exactly are you saying? I have not seen anything, sir. Yeah, yes, I can see it now, sir. We are not seeing the screen. I am seeing the screen, sir. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, yes I can see it, sir. So this is, this is the institutional block. This is the banker yes. block. So yes. what's your question, yes. sir? Okay. Do they come back to come and mitigate this banker block again or they don't come back again? We expect this banker block, this banker block now becomes your POI, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, it now becomes your POI now. Okay, okay, okay. okay sir. It's a block. It will surely attract price. That's their work. The job description of, of blocks in your chart is to attract price. They are they are like magnetic zone. They attract price back. That's where you can now set your trap and your nets. And then you just follow the ride. Do you understand, sir? Okay. Any other? Any other? Okay, I think someone is saying you should take the breaker block again. Breaker block. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you expand it? On? Yes, I'm with you, sir. This, this, um, the cube. That cube. Yeah. I yeah. just want to, can you please just um, show me again where the where to locate the cube? I think we just did together now. 
I, I don't have it stored somewhere. Like I'm just no, no, checking no, no. the charts. No, you can no, you, you you can use um you can use um you can just draw it. You don't have to go to a chart. Like a like a, a like your higher high, lower low, handsome. Just the zone to where to locate your where to locate your cube is around your POIs. And you know your POIs is either is either around your external zones or your block zones. Okay. Your POI should either be around your external zones or your block zones. In fact, if you if you are spotting an imbalance outside your POI, you are expected to neglect it. Okay. You are expected to neglect it. Let me tell you how I treat. Let me show you how I treat. This is me. It's, it's, it, this is just this is just me. It may not be applicable to any other person, but personally, this is this is what I do, and I'm going to show you that. For example, if I notice the market has been selling, I know anything that sells must buy, and anything that buys must sell. So I will wait. I mean, I might have been right, you know, but I will wait to catch that buy. And I usually like. Uh, higher time frame setups. I love higher time frame setups. Gives you time to do other things. You just set your limit and go and do other things. So let's say I've been observing this buy now. And then all of a sudden, I notice that this guy pushed out of this zone. Out of this zone. And then took out this last structural points are you with me sir i'm with you sir so my target now is for price to come back to this institutional zone why is it institutional zone it took out this last place i believe you've been you've been taught institutional can do and all you can go and watch the video. It took out this last structural point. So where is my POI now in all of this? My POI is here. My POI is here. Picture. My POI is here. However, there are times that you will spot imbalance before that POI. I won't take it because imbalance before POI most of the time they are usually inducement points. There are times that before 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 this your POI you will just see one year, year uh, imbalance there just lying low. I won't take it. If if price likes, it should turn back from there. I won't take it. It is against my trading discipline. I won't take it. Until this guy comes back to this, my POI, that's when I can take it. And I will not join it to create another higher high. If I now spot imbalance within this place, uh -huh, I can play it. But if I spot imbalance before, if I spot imbalance here, if I spot imbalance here, I won't take it. You've been taught FIBS, premium and discount zone. You buy, you buy less. Abi, you sell I and buy less. That's how to be a profitable trader. You sell I and then you buy less. So I'm buying very, very less here. This is, the, this is like a lease price. So, so discounted. Your stops below the range. Your target is in previous eye. This move, even if it's on higher time frame, can give you, we give you nothing less than one to five or one to six. Imagine now catching the lower time frame setup. Do you understand, sir? Understand, sir. The, the 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 problem is often at times um 
sometimes the you be expecting to buy in that zone there, but sometimes okay. the it, it um the the I, I don't know the zigzag movement within that very zone. Sometimes you will see some candles that it, it will appear as though it will break structure. Then every day it will now go up. So due to the manipulation or the zigzag movement there, sometimes it makes um, due to what are uh, beginner beginner beginners traders to be scared of putting a trade there because we don't want the situation whereby it will not seem as if the market wants to reverse. Okay, so it, most of the time. It most of the time it ends up leaving us before we realize that we're supposed to actually put a buy trade there or probably put a sell trade there see if you see that's why you need to have a trading discipline and a trading setup that you trade see if if i have my setup and my my trading system and my trading system tells me to buy i will buy even if everybody is selling okay that's just me. That's just me. You need to build your confidence to place your trade once your setup aligns. Because now, except you are looking for lower time frame entries here, the, you, there's nothing. You are, there's no point looking for break or structure here. Except you want to look for lower time frame entries, then it's fine. But at least catch higher time frame entries first to build to build your confidence okay. that you know what you are doing. Okay. You understand? Because the psychological effect of lower time frame entries is very, very high. There are times that mark price can take you out five times before going your way. The question is if if market stops you out five times, do you have that psychological balance to place the sixth trade? <laughs> no, let's be frank. You are a big, let's say you are a beginner. Now. I don't know your trading level, but let's say you are a beginner now. And then price market takes you out five times. Will you take the cheese trade? I would not. You see what we are saying? I don't know. I, I, I shared in one group. I think market took me out, I think, six, six times that week. Jeez. I got stuck out six times and I still placed the seventh street. Hmm. And then that seventh street recovered the loss of the um, six stop losses and then still upped my account by 30%. So imagine, imagine, imagine being mentally dented and then I don't place that seventh street. Who is the loser? I will be the user now. That's why that's why risk management is important. Okay. Because there is, no, there is no only great strategy. You need to understand that. There is no only great strategy. The best of the best is the human being. Anybody can make mistakes. No one is perfect. No one knows what price wants to do. Is your system or your trading edge that is telling you to buy or to sell? You don't know what price wants to do. We are not market movers. We are not market. We are not market uh, makers. We only trade based on what our edge is telling us to do. You get. So if my edge tells you to buy ten times and you get stopped out, yeah, it's not your fault. It's what your edge is telling you to do. You can only be afraid if that head does not have good track record. But if your edge is telling you to buy and then you get stopped out, your 11th street can cover your losses, especially if your smart money is a good risk to reward strategy. The least you should target is one to three. One to three, one to three. If you take 10 trades and you are targeting one to three and you lose five and you gain five, you will still, you are, you will still be smiling that week. It's just psychological balance. That's trading a psychological balance. It's just understanding of your risk appetite. That's just it. There's nothing really new about this thing. Are you clear, sir? Yes. What I need, I, you just explained for me. I was thinking that the entries are usually 
perfect entries. So that has been my, what has been disturbing me. I've been thinking that, okay, once you, once it gets there, there's a way a trader would just get it right. He would just put it and from there it goes. I never knew that the occasions whereby it will stop you out. Then you have to enter it. <laughs> stop you out. You to it. See, so that brother. Been, that has been. Any mentor that tells you that he doesn't lose straight is a liar. Do you understand what I'm saying? Any mentor, any trading mentor that tells you that he doesn't lose straight, is, any mentor that is just flashing profits without flashing losses is deceiving you because it will produce a weak follower. They will see, they will see, they will see losses as something alien to them whereas it's part of the game it's part of it no one is perfect no one is perfect I think I was joking with Coach Dami one day maybe day before yesterday or so we were just catching crews on the telegram group and then someone said ah it's like these guys are bad money whereas we just got stopped out I didn't even know that uh, Coach Dami took got stopped out we just got stopped out <laughs> But we came to the good to catch crews. It's part of it, guys. It's part of it. You must be emotionally detached from money for you to do well in this thing. You have to be emotionally detached. If you are too attached to money, you won't go far because it will affect your risk. You won't go far. So when you lose trade, don't be too sad. When you lose trade, don't be too sad. When you win trades, don't be too happy. That's the right mindset that a trader must. Why are we even talking about this now? That talking about smart money, please. <laughs> smart money, please. So, so, are we good? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, please, I have a question. Okay. Concerning the banker's block. Can you just um, um, go back on it again? Wow. Banker's block. That's what is on the screen. Mm -hmm. Higher highs, lower highs. Are you following my screen? My screen? Lower highs, lower low. Lower high, lower low. Lower high, lower low. Lower high, lower low. Market break structure. But before breaking structure, you can say that it took out this external liquidity. So this, by reason of this action, it makes this, this, this institutional zone. So once there is a break of structure, we expect price to come back to that institutional zone. Right? So the process, the block that is formed, the block that is formed in the mitigation process is called the banker block. Because now, this is me. to the banker's block, can it be violated? Can it, be violated? Can it also function as a, a point of interest when it's returning? Like I said, your banker block is the point is your is your point of interest. Just ensure that a new eye or low is created. Look at this: a new eye. This guy created a new eye. Broke this guy here. Broke this guy here. Created a new eye. This new eye validates this place as a banker block. So we expect this guy now to come back here. And then the buy continues. When the buy continues, this place becomes your POI. We expect the guy to come back here. Buy continues. This place becomes your PUI. That's how you stack entries. Okay. I can't hear you. Sir. I still can't hear you. Your, your, maybe I don't know if it's if I don't know. I never said that. Is breaking. 
Okay, so that you say that the fuck out took you out. Ah, uh, okay. While we're waiting for a start, please can we break up the block we call the bankers block too? Are they the same thing? No, I just I just shared the difference. A breaker block is a failed is a failed order block. I just shared I shared it with us not quite long ago. This is a banker block. What you are seeing here is a banker block. This is a banker block. All right? Sorry. This is a banker block. Well, let's let's look at what a breakup a breakup block is. <clears throat> so let's see. Market is making series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, and you are expecting this guy to hold this price, but eventually it breaks. This block you are seeing becomes your breaker block. Why is it a breaker block? It couldn't hold price. Price broke through it. It couldn't hold price. So there are times that you just see price you just come back here and then start selling. These are things that happens. If you check your chart, you see them. Do we see them? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks, boss. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, boss, thank you very much. Does that mean before every break of structure, there's always a breakup block? Um, I will say yes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Now yeah. I understand, sir. I will say yes. But there are times that you, these are times. If you if other other trading strategy now, they won't call it breaker block. They will call it maybe one other name. For example, when I was in trading smart money, I called that place structural points. Because I started trading with just pure structure. I have eyes, I have lose, I have eyes, I have lose. I would draw my fibs and then enter maybe 61.0 or 70 or 81.6. That's, that's how I trade. Before God helped me to understand this uh, smart money concept. So when I came into smart money, I now realized that, okay, we don't just, this thing is just, no, it's, it's just, it's not just happening. There is a science to it. There is a procedure to it. There is a reason why it's happening this way. Okay, so we call this, this is what we call this. It's called a breaker block. Okay, so this is called a banker block. Oh, this is an imbalance. I've been seeing it, but I don't know the meaning. Okay, this is a cube. This is the function of this cube. So, you know, it just makes trading interesting. It makes trading interesting. If you get used to this thing, indicators will give you stomach upsets. Like, it's... There is there is a way I feel when I see charts target indicators. I don't feel normal. Good. Yes, uh, see my chart. My chart is plain. Plain chart. Them trade your trade and your your plain charts. Trade it. It's there for you. If it's needed, your indicators will be there permanently. The fact that your indicators are not there permanently means you can trade without those things. So why yes, must you? When we are we bound one to ten, you you are still looking for one enemy to cross. Don't leave me that. Any other question? Um, sir, you have there's a question, a very amazing question in the chat box. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't say day. I said week, not day. I didn't say day. I said week. And 
Over trading is relative. I don't risk more than one percent of my account. So there are some trade that I risk zero point five. There are some trade that I risk zero point eight. There are some trade that I risk, risk one. So if I lose ten trades, I'm not losing more than ten percent of my account. It gives me good mental health. You understand? So I'm not afraid to play straight. I'm not afraid. Once I see my setup, I place it. Once I see my setup, I place it. So if I'm risking 1,000, if I'm risking 1% and I'm going for nothing less than 30%, guys, it's a good deal. It's a good deal for me. It's a good deal. That's not about trading. That's, it's just understanding yourself. I did a session, I had a session with some people last week and that was the main discourse, understanding yourself. You need to understand yourself before you know how to trade. Understand yourself, understand your risk appetite. It is your risk appetite that informs how, to, how you trade. You get it. It's not about trading. Though. It depends on what... If you are risking 50% of your account, you can't trade more. You can't place more than two trades now. If you are risking 5% of your account, it means you are giving yourself how many times now? 5 times 10 50. You are giving yourself 20 times to prove if you know what you are doing or not. And if God helps you and you don't know what you are doing for the 20 times, your account is gone. So if you are risking 1% of your account for every trade, it means you have to be wrong 100 times before you blow that account. How on earth will you be wrong 100 times if you know what you are doing? How on earth will you be wrong 100 times, guys? How on earth will you be wrong 100 times? You get it. So let's say out of 100 times, you lose 50 trades. That's 50%. And you take profit 50 times. So 50 times, and you are going for nothing less than one to three of your accounts. So you are risking one to get nothing less than 30. So it means the 50 that is TP, that's 50 times 30, that's $150 or 150%. Or one fifty percent And you lose 50, that's 50%. Remove 150 from 50, you are still fine. Your account is still there. No stress, no headache, no high blood pressure. And you shouldn't be trading and then you are losing 50 and getting 50. It doesn't make sense. There are some trades that you take that you eat 1 to one to 20, 1 to 30, 1 to 40. Just on a single trade. Yes, we are telling you to go for 1 to 3. But if you can go for more than 1 to 3, why not? In fact, there are some times that you want to target 1 to 3 and then you end up bagging 1 to 10. One to trading is very very is very very sweet though. You back one to twenty. When some people are walking their ass out of the stuff, you are there on your bed enjoying your money. Of course, you make losses. That's that's that one is there. It's a normal thing. It's constant. It's constant K in the equation. It's constant. So it's not over trading, my brother. The goal is to understand yourself. Any other question? Okay, Coach Dami. I guess I'm free for the day. All right, all right. So, guys, can we drop some fire emoji for Coach Avila? Drop some fire emoji for him. I mean, this is hold on. He's someone that would teach you on finance. And as much as he was trying to trick himself, he still couldn't help it. He still went into risk management. That's his core. All right. So guys, just drop some fire emojis. Drop some fire emojis. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So um, hopefully before tomorrow we'll be able to drop. Um, this video and the one we had with um Dr. Staffarian yesterday, he has been busy, so you know that's why we've not been able to get it all dropped. But then before tomorrow, it will be dropped, all right? 